Hey, everybody. Sorry. Just trying to get everything set up real quick. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about seeking sister wife while Cody fix, does my lighting. Um, lots of stuff going on in the last week. So um, let's get into it. Um, so while we finish fixing my lighting situation, I'm going to start the countdown and then we're going to let the room load. What? Hey, everybody. Okay, so, so much going on this week. Um, uh, the season finale aired on Monday. It was kind of wah, wah. Um, I have, like, a couple other things going on at the moment. Sorry. Um, so, we'll talk about that kind of briefly at the end. Uh, Dimitri and all right, so Ashley posted this long-winded, very verbose... Um, statement that had a lot of words in it today. We'll talk about that. You, you guys, <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm dealing with like I'm, I'm Julie saying it's very weird. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. 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 Um, somebody, one of my mods just said like, I, I couldn't see you. So I'm like, I'm live right now. Okay. So, um, word salad posted by Ashley. Then a lot of stuff came out about my girl, Tasha, who's flower power, uh, her and Sidian, and, uh, they have first wife issues. Uh, the first wife started to go fund me. So that's something to talk about. And then um, lastly, we're going to get into Garrick and Danielle. So uh, without further ado, um, I think we spoke last, like on one of like the seven parts that we did on um, the Snowden series that uh, at one point, Dimitri, uh, as of right now, is allegedly homeless. So, um, and we also stated that um, Ashley, I don't know if it was Ken that said it, um, or maybe, or I don't remember, but at one point we discussed that Ari, uh, not Ari, that Ashley had um, left Dimitri and that she, she took the kids with him, took the kids with her, and now they're separate. So right now, allegedly, what's being, the buzz is, is that, Dimitri's by himself, allegedly, homeless, allegedly, and Ashley took the kids and ran, allegedly. So that's what's up right now. Um, and I have more about that, but I can't really talk much more about it because I'm trying to get more information on one of that. But Ashley wrote this. Oh, wait, I need my, my co-host. I'm sorry. I've been on the phone. I wanted Dorit to come up with me. Dorit, I just dropped the link um, if you want to come up. So let me just text her and tell her. It's been a wild day. Um, I just dropped the link in my chat. There's Dorit. Okay. Hey, Dorit. Sorry I didn't start with you. How are you tonight? That's okay. I'm ready to go. Okay. So... Um, you didn't miss much. I was just talking about, you know, how uh, Dimitri's allegedly homeless and how Ashley's allegedly gone. So let me read this very verbose statement. Did you happen to read what Ashley wrote today, Dorit? No, but I did read the GoFundMe statement. Okay, so we're going to get to the GoFundMe. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, there's a lot to this. 
live. So we're gonna we're gonna go through everything. All right. So okay. now, guys, I hope um, if you get it, grab a snack uh, real quick because what Ashley wrote is super long. And uh, so go get, go make a sandwich, come back, eat it. By the time I'm done reading it, you'll be hungry again. So here's what Ashley said today. Um, we'll get to the GoFundMe, Chrissy. I'm going trying to go in order. Okay. So Ashley writes. Um, and she, she took a picture of herself. She had no bindi on. I don't know if it was laundry day or whatever, but uh, there was no, no bin, uh, bindi less Ashley wrote today. Um, what a time to be alive. Can you feel all the shifts? I've been taking a hiatus, but I wanted to pop on and share some of my ruminations with you. Ruminations. You know, but when this, the second sentence has a word like ruminations in it, you know, it's going to be like, you know, fun to read. With that being said, um, have you ever considered the freedom in detaching from your identity? So many carry around their personality like it's a badge of honor. Too stuck in who they are to become who they were meant to be, oh my God, meant, meant to be. I remember when I first started saying, I'm not married to my personality. This was a reminder to myself to embrace death of the old outdated paradigms or attachments to self and sometimes others that oh my god these are I, I feel like i'm reading like a poem like an old english poem like I, I can't and i'm not even like close to being done that who we think we are is often what's holding us back those little weaknesses that we stroke and make excuses for giving way too much power instead of seeking growth i've also been thinking a lot about how short life is especially coming out of a pandemic Reevaluate, reevaluating what and who is important, and then living in that conviction so critical. See, in that part to me, that makes me it. It makes me think that she's like kind of acknowledging that maybe she's not with Dimitri, but we have more to go through. Um, uh, bitterness and pity take you nowhere. Fame, fortune, and outer beauty are fleeting. Living in the moment and being a good human in real life is where it counts. That is the way to see the path reveal itself before you. All right, next paragraph. Uh, I think about the earth a lot. We often consider the physical aspects of taking care of her, meaning earth, picking up, picking, picking up our trash, recycling, walking, or, re or cycling more, which are important. But did you know taking care of our mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being is also is helping the Earth? We can raise the vibration of the planet by raising our personal vibration. We, we are interconnected. We are as much part of nature as the animals, trees, and the flowers. Last paragraph. Lastly, I've got a dope tribe. From the people I know intimately, such as family and friends, and the ones who I've never met or only but a few times, I feel so much gratitude. Life can be weird, confusing, cruel, and crazy, um, uh, but it's also beautiful and inspiring, unique, and fulfilling. I'm reminded of what of that whenever I'm aligned with those who have big hearts, who cut, who cut it to the core, keep it real, but send you out better than they found you. You are all keeping the world spinning. In all this cosmic shifting, the eclipses and retrogrades, I'm sending out nothing but love. I think she smoked too much weed. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> I need Sherelle's sound effects. Um, I, 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 it, so that's from Ashley. Um, again, she wore no bindi. Um, I don't know if this was coming from her inner eye. Or just like, you know, the thesaurus she was getting these words out of. But uh, she felt the need to say something, and she said it. I don't know what she said. Uh, she basically said, from what I took from that, is that she packed up her stuff. She's with her family. And um, she's awakening to the fact that what she did with Dimitri was not a very good idea. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Yes, yeah. you know, I think they just hit, they they finally hit the wall, going 120 miles an hour with nowhere to go. So she packed up her stuff and took off. He took off somewhere. They left the house. Who knows in what condition? 
just packed up and left. That was a rental. That wasn't their house either. So who knows what's going on with that? Oh my God. I just got Intel right now. Okay. So, um, Jennifer was going to be my part eight of the series. Um, and we never got into Jennifer, um, cause, uh, she actually went on vacation, um, for a couple of weeks. So that was going to be my next part in the series. But Jennifer just sent me a text with an email attached to it. Breaking news, breaking news. Ding, 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 ding. Is this so, Jennifer, Jennifer Sidian's first? No, no, Jennifer, um, I never got into her because we haven't gotten to it yet. That was, um, but Jennifer was somebody that collabed with Dimitri. I believe she owns a CBD company. And um, allegedly, uh, Dimitri like screwed her out of $5,000. I don't know. Um, but that was going to be my next part. And um, mm -hmm. so. All right. There's going to be a long line. Take a number and stand online. So going back to what I originally said about Dimitri being allegedly homeless, um, Jennifer just sent me an email saying, um, good morning, Joey slash Jennifer. Um, I'm reaching to, I'm reaching, I guess out, I'm reaching out to let you know that my objective is to still pay what I owe you. So there it is. I, I should, should I put this on the overlay? I guess I should let here, I'll read it out loud and then I'll put it on the overlay so you can see it. Um, that I uh, still pay what I owe you and I have not forgotten. I've been homeless and trying to rebuild, but wanted to ask. So boom, right there, Dimitri, right here in this email is saying that he's homeless. And this is not the source that I was using earlier when I said that Dimitri was allegedly whor uh, whoreless. <laughs> homeless. <laughs> Y'all, it's been a long day. You have no idea. Um, so here, let me screenshot this that way. Um, you can see it. Um, so he writes, number one, is there anything I could do to offset slash work off my debt to you? Um, I E, um, come to work on the farm, build fix website, any type of work you need a body mind that I can provide. I'm willing to help you. And I'm right, he's help. looking for a free place to live. So right there. Um, let me, let me figure out how to get this on the, um, overlay real quick. Doree, take the show. While I figure this out. Wait, um, hold on. I can do it. Okay. Um, so. All right. So he's, he's basically looking for somewhere to lay his hat. And so he's telling her, I'm going to try to pay you back. Can I work it off? Right. No. Keep the $5,000 and keep on trucking is what I would say. Cut your losses. Consider yourself lucky. It was only $5,000 and move on you know he's really I, I make a rule but i don't lend out money to anyone you know uh expecting it back you lend the money out to a friend if you get it back great if you don't don't if you don't have the money and you can't afford it don't do it hold on i'm just trying so to get I've learned in um, life i've learned overall. in life you try to help out friends and it never works out well so there you go all right one Cut more your and go on I will have this on the overlay in a second that you guys can see it. Um, boom. Breaking news. And there it is. So uh, I know it's like hard to read because it's like tiny, tiny, small. But one more time uh, regarding Dimitri's homelessness or not. Um, I'm reaching out to you to let you know that my objective is to still pay for what I owe you. And that's alleged five thousand uh, dollars that he had owed her. You know, she runs a CBD company, um, which we haven't gotten to yet. But he owes her money allegedly. And in this email, he's saying he, he's he's recognizing it. He wants to pay her back. I've been homeless and trying to rebuild, but I wanted to ask, you know, if he could barter it. Uh, you know, he's going to work on the farm, build a website. Uh, you know, whatever you need. So it sounds like he's really desperate for um, a home. He's very desperate, and I wonder. I, mean, I kind of almost, I, you know, I kind of almost feel bad for him. Not gonna lie. I, Why? I, I, Why I don't. You know, know, he's he's Cody has people. not had like the easiest couple of years, and I, but, I do you know, feel bad for him in a sense. But like you know, no, he made his bed. Now he's lying in it. 
Wasn't expecting to see that type of email. Thanks, Jen. Um, so, and then Jennifer, text me after this. Oh, the date. Uh, let me see the date. It was today, 10.32 in the morning. So, yeah. He's grabbing at straws. He probably sent an email like that to everyone that he's ever barred. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Time. Jennifer said it was a few days ago. I misspoke. It was a few days ago at 10.32 in the morning. Not today. It was This was a few days ago. And that happened to be the same time when he reached out to somebody else that is an informant <laughs> that also kind of... A very similar email went out to somebody else. And that was what I was basing my original allegations on that well, he was what did I just say he probably sent a, a, to you know to everybody he owes money to and um you know he's grabbing at straws trying to see if somebody will uh take him in so that's wild um and now it's again you know people come forward he okay hey John, um, why do you feel sorry for him I don't get it it was sent on June 7th I don't like you know just because like we had it rough and I would hate to be you know like I, you know, I don't think he's a, you know, listen, I, I, like I'm not completely, you know, I, you know, we've done seven parts. We know what kind of guy he is. We know what we deal with, you know, with him, but like, I, like, I feel like a little tinge of sorrow for him. You know what I mean? Like a little, little tiny but, itty bitty bit, you no, know, I mean? it's not like, I'm gonna say, oh, you should come move in with me. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> John, you didn't destroy lives like he has destroyed. I mean, really, look at what he's done to Chrissy, her children. She's not, you know, able to go back home. Uh, I mean, really, she was sent into the devil's hands. Uh, people are hiding in different countries from him. I mean, this is a whole different ball game. You can't feel sorry for him. This is what he created. Now he's paying for it. Oh, Karma's a bitch. I didn't realize it. I'm sorry. Thank you, spiritual divine. Has Dimitri, let me pull it up. Has Dimitri and the wife broken up? Well, I started off this live saying, um, you know, that he was allegedly homeless, which really seems like that's factual at this point. Um, and that Ashley had taken off with the kids. Like, I, I remember, I don't remember who it was who told me. Maybe, maybe been Ken or in one of the seven parts, uh, Dimitri had went back to, allegedly went back to California and he went home to an empty house. Ashley had taken off with the kids. Um, and that's that story. And it kind of looks like th that that's the truth um, because of not this email and the other email that I saw the other day um, looks like he's out on the street and he's just looking for a place to stay. And he's reaching out to the people that he kind of took advantage of to get a place to stay. And you know what like makes what makes me think like remember like when they had the, the wedding not this wedding on the season finale but Vanessa's the season wedding when he married Vanessa where did they get yeah. all those people from did they hire extras that that was his family and her family and so friends. where is his family now why does nobody well, nobody can take him in they run for the hills they don't want anything to do with him um that's what I, I'm gathering. I think it was Ashley's family more so than his family. I'm feeling like they just hired extras like for the day. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, because they're always saying family, family, family. But like right. you never see, like, you know, whenever they have their scenes, you never see like anybody calling them or them hanging out with friends or like whatever. Like it just and it, it was I thought about this that point. too. And also this wedding, there was no one there. I found it kind of odd. But um, well, that would make more sense. I mean, I know they blamed it on COVID, but like, you know, seeing like knowing what I know now, and I've talked to a lot of people who have been very close to the scene, you know, um, it's like, like, you know, people in the comments saying like, you know, he probably screwed them over. Probably did, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, Ashley's mother was very involved last season with Vanessa and uh, she was at the wedding before the wedding, met Vanessa. She was very vocal and very opposed to Ashley's lifestyle. Where was she this season? I know, Gwendolyn saying his sister was at the wedding. I, I don't know. I mean, it just like if he's reaching out to people, he screwed over for like a like a place to to lay his head. Like it's got to be really bad. Like if like I like the last person I would 
reach out to is someone that like I just screwed over for money or or whatnot. Um, Cody's right behind me. Everyone's asking for you, Cody. Oh, hey. Uh, hey, Cody. He What's has up, no way to turn. Listen, he burnt his bridges. That's why I said, you know, they both hit the wall going 120 miles an hour. Splat. Nowhere to turn. That's it. Dead end. So, so now it's, I guess it's confirmed, you know, allegedly confirmed that he's homeless. And uh, this whole empire he built up, I don't know, whatever. Let's go to, so to, as far as Chrissy goes, I know Chrissy gave an update. Let me get that going. Uh, Chrissy gave an update, I think the day after I did my last live. I think I did my last live on Thursday. And then Chrissy did an update. Let me just pull that up real quick. Um, okay, so Chrissy writes, um, words aren't enough to express my gratitude to each and every one of you. I know I know you want to know if we're okay, and I appreciate you so much for just uh, simply many things that I am not able to share at this time. I hope you can understand. What I can tell you is that my girls and I are doing okay for now. The journey ahead of us is long and a little scary, but I'm keeping my head up and pushing through. We are in the process of finding new accommodations. If you're in the California area and some um, and have some renting accommodations, please reach out. I will update you as much as I can on how things are progressing with us. Again, thank you for everything you have done for me and my girls. May your kindness be returned to you a hundred times over. And when, and when the time comes, I promise to turn to kindness. Um, you have shown me over. I, I promise to turn the kindness you have shown me over to someone else in need. Please be, please be safe and well. Uh, so... I pay it forward. Yeah, she's very grateful, and I, I really can't speak much about it. I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, go back to Africa," you know, "Oh, this, that, and the other." But uh, you know, they have a legal wedding. I mean, a legal marriage. Uh, Dimitri filed the divorce paperwork like the day after he got cleared of the SA claims. Um, so she kind of has to stay here. And now that we know how like conniving Dimitri is, like I wouldn't want to leave here until I knew that, you know, everything was done. I wanted to be able to show up in court. I'd want to be able to have like, you know, a lawyer or whatever. Like I wouldn't trust being in a different country while this litigation was going on, especially how we could sit, especially knowing how crafty Dimitri could be. Right. No, I don't blame her. I mean, she needs to have a clear cut decision, a divorce and go with the clear head and mind back to her country and live her life with her daughters and, you know, try to put this past. No, they were legally married, Yvonne. I mean, TMZ had the paperwork. They were, they were legally married hundred percent. Did you see his brother, her brother? He was, what a lovely family she has back home. Very loving, very caring. And I was like going, no, you're sending her to the devil. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that when we talk about the um, the, the recap. I mean, the, the episode was really, yeah. you know, it was, it was uh, Garrick and Danielle and then, uh, you know, the Snow Ones, and we all know how that played out. So that'll be a quick recap, but. Uh, the family was, you know, nice. Um, Did she ever make the ten thousand that they were looking for on GoFundMe? Uh, let me look real quick. I know, like last time I checked, it was eight. Um, let me see. It's at nine, nine thousand even. Good. So, and thank you guys. You know, me and Ari were talking about this, and. Uh, Vanessa and everybody got Tasha. Everybody got involved who helped. Like I never in a million years thought that anybody would have been this generous. So um, she'll make the ten thousand. There's not much to go. You know, and even if she doesn't, um, you know, that's that's a good amount. Whether she has to, you know, stay here for a few months <laughs> um, while the court case is going, and then fly back to Africa. I, I don't know what her intentions are. I don't know what she wants to do. Uh, well, you know, I have a question. Being that Dimitri's homeless, how is she going to get a hold of him? How are the court's going to get a hold of him? I don't even know how he can afford an attorney at this point. I mean, well, there's legal aid and uh, family court. Not like you don't get legal aid though. Like with like a civil, like you know, legal aid you get like in criminal. No, but family court provides lawyers. 
Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. When even when you're the plaintiff? I don't know how it quite works. I know that when I got divorced and uh, I have the same situation, you know, but with the K-1 visa, I should be on the other show. Because <laughs> I, I was a fool. I did the K-1 visa and brought my husband over. But uh, he ended up not paying child support. And I went to family court and they provided me with lawyers and everything. But I ended up dropping it because what I did was I sent him back to where I got him from, to his mother in Israel. But um, they provided everything for me. I didn't do a thing. See, I, I don't know what kind of home. visa he tried to get her here on because they got married. I don't know if it was the K-1 because, you know, she was from South Africa, you know, and then the whole 90 day, the 90 day fiance crap. Um, and she got it rather quickly. I'm very surprised. Or if she just came here, you know, prior to like, you know, because she did, you know, prior to like the country shutting down, she couldn't fly back. So she was here. Maybe they tried the spousal visa. Um, I don't know. At I any know. Rate, who, who the hell knows? Um, so much like to Chrissy, I really, you know, I know she was staying in a very temporary place ran by like, you know, uh, the county. <laughs> and... Yeah. You know, that's why she was in so in need because, you know, there's a time limit as to how long you can stay in certain places. Oh, well, they have some nice shelters, you know, for families that yeah. are going through and then, But they, they don't do. really, you know, it's not like they don't give it to you, like, you know, as for as long as you want. So right. hopefully, you know, hopefully Chrissy can use that money and just go home or set herself up here or, and it's not eaten up by like, lawyer i i don't know but she's doing okay you know. she'll figure it out yeah yeah she has people that you know will help her you know guide her through the system being that she doesn't know it there are those out there that do know it and that will guide her and in the shelter that she's in they, they're very knowledgeable and they guide them through all um, the red tape as far as Taylor, I still believe she's out of the country. And as far as Vanessa, I'm still I still believe she's out of the country. Um, and I think that would wrap up all of the Snowden stuff that we have to cover because we're already 27 minutes in and we've talked nothing but Snowden. So let me let me move on to the next couple. Okay, um, Tasha, my girl, Flower Power, uh, my girl, Flower Power. Maybe not power. so much Flower Power. Huh? Maybe not so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my girl Flower Power got some uh, press. John just believe I if if to answer that question, I believe they're separated. I think they are. I think you know, going from what I've seen and read and heard, I believe that he is homeless, and I believe that she took the kids and ran. That's one hundred percent what I believe. Whether that's true or not is another thing, but. That's what I believe. Um, so, um, all right. So, my girl Flower Power, Tasha, and Sayed, Mr. Patchouli, uh, seem to have gotten some press this week. I don't think they were expecting it, but a lot of stuff was going on with them. So, let's get into that real quick. Okie dokie. Um, there's a lot going on. Um, you John, know, are you going to read that uh, letter from the uh, GoFundMe the Jennifer? Yeah, wrote? it's really, it's really because long. It's a long I, letter, but it left me with more questions for her than wanting to help her. It's, well, you know, I can say I've talked to uh, my girl, Flower Power. She's, you know, she doesn't hide anything. She's very forthcoming. Um, you know, she's very honest. I know Starcasm have written an article about uh, her and actually Sidian's first wife getting arrested, which we'll, we'll go to, we'll get into. Um, and she's, you know, uh, she's got nothing to hide. Like, you know, I've talked to a lot of people on TV. I've talked to a lot of people in my life and I believe everything, every word that comes out of her mouth, uh, you know, and for someone so young, she has like a lot of experience. Um, so, you know, but so Sidian's first wife, um, I get, I think her name is Jenny. Yeah. Jenny. Started to go fund me. And 
He's got a whole big twenty dollars so far. I was just, I, 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 that's what I was just looking at the twenty dollars <laughs> right there. I was about, about to say that. So Sidian's uh Sidian and Tasha's former first wife, and this is the mother of Sidian's kids, started to go fund me. She's asking twenty thousand dollars for twenty thousand dollars. I mean, y'all want to give Chrissy a hard time for asking for ten. She's asking for twenty and she she's she's from here. Yeah, so and uh, twenty thousand dollars is the beginning of what she needs. Now this is okay. Now, guys, remember when I read Ashley's letter and I said make a sandwich? You're gonna maybe like make a dinner, like put some roast beef in the oven or like a pot roast because <coughs> this is super long. And like, but here we go. Let me just get John. Some, I have a suggestion. John, maybe we should read a paragraph at a time and comment on it. We'll just dissect it. We're going to have to because this is as long as War and Peace. Yeah. So here we go. So the first wife of Sidian and Tasha is wanting $20,000 for a GoFundMe for family court legal funding for mom of two. So let's get into it. All right. Read more. Today, okay. This was created two days ago. Um, Today, my children's father confirmed what I had been dreading for months, that he had packed up our two children and moved them seven hours away from the city that they were born and spent their entire lives in. After spending the last month attempting to serve his lawyer court summons, his, he finally decided to share his new address with me, causing even more of a delay in serving him. Once I was able to pick myself up off the floor... I knew, I knew representing myself in court just isn't going to cut it. Paragraph number one. Let me do a second one. Friends and family know my situation well, but for anyone else, I am the first wife of the TLC reality TV show Seeking Sister Wives' most recent edition, Sidney and Jones, and the mother of our oldest and youngest children. Why? Did, okay. Although we, never, although we were never married. Okay, so there's a lot of hubbub about that. So... Right. Wife says they were never married. Okay. Um, probably, they were never married. Despite spending 10 years together as a couple, the show states that Sid and I were polygamous, which also wasn't true. Regardless, as much as I wanted my name and my story to remain out of the public eye for the sake of our kids, my desperation has driven me forward. You want to take a break there? No, go on, Finn, go on, because it gets interesting where I have a lot of questions. It's just like, okay, now you're doing this, but whatever. Okay, so right. with, with my children in mind, I will do my best to explain why I'm in this mess. Much will be left out for their sake. Oh, so, so, so nice of you to leave out stuff for your where children. Where has she like been? You're probably, you're where probably, has she been all these years? Well, I haven't even no, like Allegedly, sleeping. she lost custody of her children. Due right, to and the, she let it go, and she didn't fight it. Now, why is she fighting it now? Well, allegedly, there's... Um, well, we'll get to that. Um, Sid was my very first boyfriend, who I met soon after I turned 18. Nine months later, I became pregnant with their eldest. It was my personal desire for my child to have a present father that kept me in, kept me in what quickly turned into a tumultuous toxic, abusive, abusive relationship for the next decade. He demanded a one-sided open relationship very early on. I was able to eventually di disengage that aspect and ignore his persistent need. Did she like take notes from Ashley? I'm sorry. And ignore his persistent need to sleep around for the most part until he moved in Tasha. Soon after, I experienced a mental breakdown and the relationship concluded. Keep going or, or, or break? Okay, so she had a mental breakdown for five years and wasn't able to cope and deemed unsuited to raise her children is what I take from that. It, you know, as a mother, you know, I would fight tooth and nail for my children no matter what. I mean, it doesn't take five years to pick yourself up off the floor. Hello? And knowing, right. and if it's true that he abused her and lived this kind of life, you wouldn't want your children in it. So you would fight to get them out. He got custody for a reason. What is that reason? Um, well, 
allegedly it's because of drugs and there you go. We'll, we'll get to that. All right. Allegedly that relationship ate me up and spit me out. I returned to the world, a broken pit of a human. Even so I did my best to heal and find a way to support my children with my support system. Having been, having been, that's such a, that just not good grammar with my support system, having been destroyed long ago, this proved quite difficult. It was the only, it was only the past year that I have, that I even learned um, what coercive control was. And by then I had already played into my ex's hand several times over. The details would undoubtedly make several novels. Like I'm reading right now. Um, all right, so there's more. All right, let me, oh God. Okay. Like, ha. Fast forward to the very beginning of the pandemic. I lost my job and subsequently my car. Soon, all right, so. The beginning of the pandemic was like March, at least here in New York. Yeah, March 2020. Well, I, I, I remember the whole state closed down here, St. Patrick's Day. That was right. like everything shut down. Right. Um, so, okay. All right. So, and, you know, it got hit. We got hit the hardest first. So I mm -hmm. don't know when others, like they were in Idaho. So I don't know when Idaho shut down. I mean, it's, you know. I know it's not as populated as New York or, you know, uh, New Jersey or whatever, but. Well, let's it, just say spring 2020. And, and, Cause I'm trying to like, just put the timeline in my head. You know, I like timelines. Um, mm. I lost my home and uh, all right. Suddenly my car soon after I lost, I lost my home. Okay. So she lost a job. She lost a car and she lost her home that I shared with my kids whom I had shared custody with my ex. To this day, I wonder if my ex had a hand in losing my house as the month prior he had issued another one of his, I'm going to ruin your life threats, a threat he's always carried out in over a dozen ways over the past five years since we split. This was quickly followed by the third court summons where he requested full custody of our children. With all the chaos at the time of COVID and starting a new job, I unknowingly missed the deadline. Oh, get the hell. These Except, are your kids. Yeah, I was just going to say, no. as a mother, again, there is no way on this godly earth yeah, that no, I that, to yeah. get a court date to get my children back. And 99% of the time, the court goes with the mother. The, the children go with the mother, unless there's some mitigating circumstances that are so bad that they turn them over to their father. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. Like, you know, like if I get a traffic ticket, like I know what my court date is for it. Right. You know what I mean? Flower Power is Tasha. That's my nickname for her. She's Flower Power. I call, I call, I call Tasha Flower Power. I call City and Patchouli. Uh, those are my nicknames for them. Loving, loving nicknames. Because like, I'll, I'll call Tasha Flower Power. I'm like, what's up, Flower Power? So this, those are my nicknames for them. Um, so I not only miss my deadline to respond and his request defaulted in his favor. I saw over five lawyers over the next six months to see what my legal options were and was given grave news by each due to the many negative opinions he submitted to the judge by not responding. His opinions were now considered legally true. It was the sixth lawyer that, that chimed in to tell me I could have filed a motion to reverse the default one week past the six month window that was, that would be allowed. All right, John. We're not I even would, close to being true with this, by the way, guys. FYI. The laws, on that. The, the laws and what her rights are in her state, right? She should have been well equipped and very knowledgeable in all the laws and all her rights. Well, she waits until the shit hits the fan and then she's going to lawyers to try to get her children back, which is very hard to do. I mean, it's just like, you know, it, it, it's very, I mean, it's very verbose in an Ashley style. And then here's what I'm thinking halfway through this. Okay. She saw that we raised all this money for Chrissy, right? I mean, right. Chrissy, Chrissy got a lot of money fast from this GoFundMe. And now all of a sudden this GoFundMe pops up like a week and a half, two weeks later. She's like, oh, look, 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 look at Chrissy. Look at Chrissy getting all this money from people. I mean, I'm just speculating here, but like, I I have a brain and two fucking eyes. Uh, like, look at Chrissy, because all of a sudden now she didn't want to speak up. She didn't want to do this. She didn't want to do that. But now it's 
Oh, look, people are donating to people on the show, and I'm going to use my kids as a way to garner sympathy. Right. Again, where have you been for five years, Jenny? Where have you been for five years? Sleeping? We, we still have a lot to read. And not only did she, you know, Chrissy was asking for 10 and people, 10K, and people were like, oh, my God, she's at, why, why not it be a million? I mean, Chrissy has her kids. She's from South Africa. She's in a shelter. Uh, she's got no resources. And this is a woman who's lived here her whole entire life who unwilling, un unwittingly, uh, you know, missed her own children's custody day because, you know, she got a new job or whatever, but and that was more important. Important. so all right. So there's more. All right. You know, let me just say we are very giving people and we have a lot of empathy for people, but don't take us for fools either. Cause we're not, you know, and proof in the pudding. She only uh, has $20 in the fund so far. And it's been up for over two days. And that's the thing, like, you know, like, you know, GoFundMe has a very negative connotation and like people who help raise money for GoFundMe's like usually get like, you know, I've gotten, you know, um, there's a lot of cast members from my day who did GoFundMe's and I, hell, I even had a GoFundMe. Um, so I understand the, um, you know, the negative uh, shit that comes with it. But like, I would not have supported Christy in this GoFundMe if I didn't believe every word of what she said was true if i didn't have ari on if you know and 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 ari told her story and then i had ken and you know ken and his wife susie and their story jennifer and their story jada and her story you know everybody combined you know and everybody had the same story about dimitri everybody it was the same shit you know he's not great he used them all, and that was something I could wrap my head around, you know, like, you know, and that's why I supported it and put my name out there because, like, I'm not going to, you know, why the hell am I going to put my name on something that people could say, oh, look, John, you, you, you know, you help raise money for this, this bullshit. I'm not going to do that. So, um, all right, let me go back to this because there's a lot more to go. All right. I haven't seen my children in 10 months. My ex now claims I'm on drugs and have even told my children this is to explain why I cannot contact them. Interestingly, his his out of the blue claim came two weeks after I apparently did not respond to his liking to out of the blue message where he attempted to blackmail me. So now, according to uh, Jenny here, sitting is blackmailing her. Um, although I was never given details of what show he would be appearing in on, um, even going so far as to instruct my children not to share anything with me, he was quite concerned that I might try and tell my story, or rather anything that might paint a negative picture of himself and Tasha. I learned the details of the show the day it premiered, long after my ex had decided it was best the children have no contact with me. Um, last, you're almost done. Last paragraph. I am a good mom. I love my children with my entire being. Sure, I've made mistakes in the past, but I've learned from them and apply those lessons daily. I've got a tremendous heart, which has suffered more than I know than I knew possible by being excluded from my children's lives. By far the most painful, however, is the thought that my children may feel I've abandoned them for any reason. My only wish is to see balance restored and find some sense of justice in any of this. And then she closes it. Thank you for Liam and Tyrion. Mom loves you. Right. She uh, got mom more, loves you so much. And she forgot to go to court. Yeah. No, no. I don't think she's going to raise a lot of money. <clears throat> Sorry. I mean, there's could a lot there more be to the story than meets the eye here. And it has nothing to do with polygamy. I mean, could there be like, you know, truth in this? Absolutely. I just, I don't know. It's like, you know, you knew about it. What do you want the $20,000 for though? For lawyers? For what? Like, she I, I don't say, she it. says for lawyer fees. If she's paying a lawyer, it's going to cost her a lot more than $20,000 to fight this. But according to her, she lost her home. She lost her car. She lost her job. So, but then she got a new job. So is this money going towards like a new home? Like, 
a car to go see. Like I don't know. I it just it, there's it's not specific enough for my liking. Are At least gonna, we what. Are they going to be selling like this whole book that you just read at like uh, Barnes and Noble? I might have to sell Does it. Does it come in <laughs> paperback and hardcover? Like, I mean, geez, good lord. Um, There's you know, no accountability here what she's going to do with the money. She's going to take the money, and who knows what she's going to end up doing. It. She's just, she's just going to say that, you know, it was a, um, a hard battle to fight, and she lost. <sighs> You know, I, I'd hate to see like anybody not being able to see their kids. Like, you know, I, I don't know. Um, but there's more to it. All right, so that's the go from this is just part one. I told you there's like a lot of stuff going on this week with the show. We haven't gotten to the recap yet. Um look at all these cast members coming in hot with the with all these stories. Uh so hold on. It just gets me that they think that it's so easily right. gotten the money. And that we would just turn over our hard-earned money to just anyone. I have to make a quick. I need. I need. I need further info. Hold on one second. Go ahead, Dorit. Talk. Carry the show, Dorit. I'll, I'll carry the show. So, what is everyone in the chat? I can't see the chat, so I don't know what they're saying. How does everyone feel about it? You know, donating money. To someone that just came out of the blue. I have a problem with that whole letter. There's a lot of holes in it. And um, like I said, I'd like a lot more answers. I have a lot of questions and a lot of uh, answers that need to be given uh, before I donate. I mean, you always want to help a mother try to get her children if she is a fit mother and is deserving of having her children, which is in question here. Well, you're, I mean, that's the most important thing. Sorry, guys, it's Cody. John had hi, to make Cody. a really quick uh, hi, sweetie. <laughs> John had to make a phone call just to like confirm some facts and stuff because that's you know, obviously, yeah. So you can read, I don't, I can't see the comments in the chat. Um, they're, they're pretty much like agreeing like um they're not sure like you know if if she even has a lawyer um you know um it's saying i'm not sorry it sounds fake to me um i mean it's pretty much it's pretty much everything that is what we're pretty much talking about. i got i got my facts hold on come oh, back. Oh. Okay. well it was nice talking to you all for that sorry oh. i'm sorry I need I was to, told that. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to put the wrong info out there. So this has been a little bit of a sloppy live on my on my part. Uh, so I, my apologies in advance. Well, your phone and my phone. Well, you want to get your facts straight. Yeah. Um, okay. Allegedly, in, in an hour opinion. Um, so here's here's what I um, allegedly allegedly uh, Jenny. Um, she lost custody after a drug binge. There and you go. Allegedly, uh, this is her way of getting back at them. Um, it's very messy. Um, alleged. So she's mad because she was on drugs. Allegedly. 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 Everything I'm saying is allegedly. But so she and like you said, John, she's getting back at them. So now what she's doing is she's going to try to fight for the kids to get them taken away from their father and get them back to really stick it to patchouli. Right. And, and it's not going to happen because if she has a history of drugs, it's very difficult. To get history your children of drugs. Back. You have to go through rehab and counseling and parenting classes. The courts just don't say, oh, okay, here, have your, your children back. It's not that easy. Is she, like, when you, when you, and I, I have no idea, but, I mean, it's just a question. I don't know. Someone in the comments might be able to answer, but while, while she was going through all this, or if she still is, or whatever, allegedly, like I said, is she supposed to pay, because he has custody of the kids, is she supposed to pay for child support? Or well, they had 50-50, but now he's got 100%. So I would think maybe he didn't ask the court for child support. It depends if he asked for it or not. Okay, so 
allegedly, um, she um, hasn't seen the kids in months, or uh, hasn't contacted the kids in months. Um, uh, and uh, it's just, you know, and the fact, you know, with this and then the GoFundMe started at the last minute, um, you know, according to what I see, um, uh, you know, Sidian does have sole custody. Um, um, okay, so there was another article written by Starcasm actually about, um, so on top of this this week, uh, my girl Flower Power and Patchouli didn't have an easy week. So Starcasm wrote an article, uh, which I'm going to talk about right now about um, Tasha being arrested previously, and um, so was the the former first wife who now has this GoFundMe. And Dorit, I'm guessing you're on your phone. Is that why you can't see the chat? Yes. And that's why. Okay. So let me pull this star. Let me pull this Starcasm article up. I'll put it in my story after. Um, I end the live that way you guys can read it if you want. I'm going to have to download this off and, my Kindle. And Tasha also commented <laughs> on this. I mean, Tasha really doesn't have, uh, she, she's like, listen, she goes, I'm not hiding anything. I, she's very, I, I like her forthcomingness very because open. yeah. Um, okay. So seeking sister wife, Tasha Jones charged with a felony, um, with city and his wife back in 2016. Okay. So according to Jenny, the first wife, they were never legally married, kind of like a Dimitri and Ashley situation. Um, but, uh, hold on, I'm just reading the article, I'm trying to find. I think it was a grand larceny. Um, okay, so according to Starcasm, Sidian's first wife was, you know, Jenny, the one who has to go find me, was arrested on January 24th of 2016, I believe, for felony burglary. A misdemeanor theft charge was later added. One day after Sidian's first wife was arrested, a criminal complaint was filed against Tasha for felony theft. And I inquired as to if they were like on the job together, but no, they were uh, one one crime didn't have anything to do with the other. They were just they just happened to be arrested on charges like a day apart, but one didn't have anything to do with the other. Two separate. Uh, yeah, two separate cases. Um, Sidian's first wife was arrested. Wait, did I just say that? Okay, I just said that. Okay. Um, Tasha was initially uh, charged with felony theft, but she would later cut a plea deal and was found guilty of misdemeanor pe petty theft. Um, she was given a suspended sentence and was placed under on unsupervised probation. The judge withheld judgment in the case, and after Tasha completed her probation, the charge was dismissed. So, Tasha got in trouble. Um, the judge. Well, you know, her first charge was grand larceny. That's over a thousand dollars. Well, I'm think um, Tasha. I, I don't know if the grand larceny was Jenny or Tasha, but it, it says Tasha was felony theft, but she got a, a she she cut a plea. It went down to petty larceny or petty theft. Um, judge, she was young, judge gave her probation, uh, she completed her probation, and then the judge, uh, wound up not charging her anything, so she has, like, you know, there was no charge ever placed on her, on her record for this, um, but, you know, that happened, um, and I know what, I know the backstory behind that, so I'll, I'll get to that in a second, um, okay, so, Sidian's first wife had a burglary charge. Uh, so Starcasm writes, the burglary, Sidian's not first wife, whatever you want to call her, whatever. So, uh, the burglary charge against Sidian's first wife was dismissed and she was placed on probation for the theft charge. Unfortunately, she did not adhere to the stipulations of her, of her probation like Tasha. She was arrested for a, proba a probation violation in May 2016. Um, and uh, a year later. So I know what they did in both cases. <laughs> um, 
sarcasm writes the actual court documents from the cases are not available online and it is currently the weekend so i do not know what they did well i know okay so we'll get to that well usually uh, when they're very young they expunge their uh but, files well yes i have yeah um uh but this was not the first foray into legalities with tasha um in August of, 20, uh, of 2007, Tasha was charged with a misdemeanor count of running away, which is crazy to me. I believe Tasha was born in 92, so that would have made her 14 or 15 at the time. And Tasha spoke about not having a great family. Um, I think her mom, uh, you know, her mom was going through things. Tasha left at an early age. Listen, I've had, you know, I didn't have a, I didn't have a great upbringing i didn't have great parents uh my grandparents wound up raising me um so if you're like in a bad situation and you feel like you, I, I you feel like you need to go then you go you go yeah um so that's kind of what i wanted to brush on from the sarcasm article but um according to okay so allegedly um, what Tasha did was that, um, she, she had a roommate, um, and she allegedly took a laptop from the roommate. Um, she was not in a great place. And then, um, the, uh, the guy she took the alleged laptop from wanted to drop the charges. But at that point, the state had pressed anyways, uh, so, like I said earlier, she, the judge, you know, put her on the, the supervised on probation. She did her community service, and then it was later dropped. Um, a court now on the other, on the flip side of things, what um, <coughs> Sidian's first wife Jenny, the one with the twenty thousand dollar GoFundMe, did was hold on, wait for it. I have so much information <laughs> to go through. Um, wait. So allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, um, hold on. Um, Jenny stole um, a bunch of leggings from the mall while she was allegedly high on Xanax. Okay, that falls into a uh, line. Yeah, they sell them. They 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 steal them and they sell them so that they can buy more drugs. So. Ooh. Leggings, oh, no, like I mean, like allegedly, so you don't have to keep like Lula, like Lularoo, like like leggings, like I don't like I don't even know, like I just like you know whatever. Well, At least Asian. Sasha went for a laptop, that's electronics, but like yeah, right. leggings, like hey, they're they're probably easy to stack in like on your on your person. Like, and, I, like, like I don't know, you know I they, I know leggings like are a big bucks, thing so right now. Uh, you know, a lot of people make money off of them. Um, you could buy them for a dollar in the uh, dollar store. <laughs> so I don't know. Are they Lululemon? Like I, I you know, know. whatever Mary Brown, whatever that that, that legging stuff. No, she, she wasn't had. in her right mind. She didn't know what she was taking. She just took whatever she could. So, oh wait. So Pink Flamingo says Lululemon Lululemon leggings are a hundred and ten. Wow. All right, now I have more information. I told you guys, and this is going to be like an in-depth. I don't even know if we're going to get to. Uh, um, hold on, let me get to. Now I, there's a list of charges that Miss uh, Miss um, Jenny has been. There's a lot of arrests. Um, hold on so much yeah I, I don't know if i want to go through everything because i feel like i've already said enough um we could imagine what they are they're probably all similar you know there was a charge uh burglary petty theft violation of probation that was one all on 124 of 2016 she posted bond whatever um parking tickets uh, just like a lot of shit. Um, 
it's a, it's like a 12 page PDF. Um, it's a lot. Well, John, with that record, she's going to have a very hard time getting custody of her children. And it doesn't mean she's like a horrible person. Like I'm not trying no. to. No, it doesn't. Look, everybody wants me to get to Garrett. Size, everybody's saying Garrett, 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 Garrett. Um, yeah, in the court size, it's not a good thing. So, are you guys good with our coverage now? Should we move to Garrick and Danielle? Okay. I feel like everybody in the comments wants me to get to uh, Garrick and Dan Garrick. All right, so let's just get get to it. And again, I'm not trying to um, say Jenny is the world's worst person, but. Well, not for twenty thousand dollars in the GoFundMe. Okay, so everybody wants to know if Garrick and Danielle are still together. Um, I asked somebody uh, mm -hmm. close to that scene, and I was told yes. She will never leave him. I told you, if he goes to Brazil, she will be on his coattails with the two boys behind her. She's never going to let him go. Um, so She's very let's, needy. Well, she can't. Let's, get in, let's get into the recap of the season finale. And um, let's talk about... I'm only going to talk about their scenes because it was... so. I, I don't even know where to start. Okay. We kind of talked about it last week with, like, you know, the whole family going down to Cabo. So, um, you know, Garrick can impregnate Bert while Danielle's parents are there, the children, you know. The, it's a family affair. And, you know, you know, I really like Bert. You know, I think she's actually super sincere and genuine and, like, kind of in it for the right reasons. I just wish Bert was actually going to like the Winders. I like, you know, because with Garrick, like, I don't know what it is about him. I just hate him so much. Like, it's just one of those people, like, even if I didn't watch a show, I would look at him and like, I hate you. Um, but, you know, he's always like this, this empty, this empty, like, look on his face, like the, like, he's like, like, there's like just nothing in his eyes. Like, there's no soul. He has dead um, eyes. You know, he's got the about Ga uh, Garrick. Everything is me, 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 me. Um, and you know, and I, I, I don't have anything bad to say about Bert. I don't. I like Bert so much. You know, you know when she, so she comes in the house. You know, she arrives. Parents are there hiding in the kitchen. Um, you know, she's she meets the kids. Danielle had a DUI and. And CA in charge. Uh, oh shit! I didn't even know about that. Especially the that I don't want to write say that out loud, but I didn't know about the uh, yeah the ladder on that. I I that's news to me. She doesn't um, seem the type. Uh, yeah. Um. Wow. Well, I that just wow. Um. Sorry. Um. So you know, Bert's there. She sees the kids, uh, and then like you know, they surprised uh, her with like you know Danielle's parents sitting in the back of the kitchen, and then like she's so happy to see them, and she's crying and she's calling them mom and dad, which is just super weird. Like I could see if it was like Garrick's parents, but you know that she was meeting for the first time, but it's Danielle's parents. So, the woman that you're replacing, because we all know that Bert is replacing Danielle. I mean, oh yes, any anybody can see that. Uh, so very weird, and the parents were very receptive towards her. That was even weirder. Like if it, like, but you know, her Danielle's father is the only voice of reason. And this whole family, because he is questioning Derek, and um. And, and his answer is always, well, God will take care of it. And the father said, well, you know, there are a lot of Bible stories. You know, it's not always God that's going to take care of it. What are you prepared to do? And can you handle it? What, well, Melly, so Melly, is what you're saying because of it when Danielle had like that alleged DUI that she had the kids in the car and that was what, and that was what that second claim was made? That could very well be. 
Okay, because that would make sense to me. I, right. I can see Danielle being handy. You know what I mean? Uh, it's considered child endangerment, abuse. Yes. Allegedly. Okay, in my so, opinion. All right, so then we have Danielle there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, parents love Bert. Weird. Bert loves the parents. Weird. Um, you know, I guess, you know, they're there to impregnate her. Okay. Thank you, Melody. Thank you for the clarification. Um, so you, we all know that, you know, and the whole family knows that they're there to make a baby. Weirder, like, just like, weirdest <laughs> shit I've ever, you know, I, I would expect this like from the Snowdens. Like, I thought like of all the people, like, they were like the most normal, but no. Um, so... Garrick and, you know, Bert are just fornicating like crazy with the in-laws and the kids. They're playing like, you know, foosball and whatever. And, and then I guess after one of their like, you know, uh, fuck face. <laughs> fuck fest. I can't. I can't even. Um, you know, Garrick and Garrick and Danielle, uh, Danielle, Garrick and Bert come out and Danielle's there with the parents and you know so how'd it go <laughs> and this scene it was the craziest shit i've ever seen in my life so bird comes out with garrick you know they're all like rosy and flush because they just banged and then bird's like it's hot it's hot out here and like she takes off her with like that little lace like thing the bathing that, suit cover the bathing suit cover which was like really that was really making you hot but yeah. but she takes off her, like, you know, her bathing suit cover. And then Danielle, without missing a beat, you now, because Bert's there and just with her bikini on, Danielle takes off her, the same lace bathing suit cover and takes her off. Takes her right. off. I thought that was funny. I laughed at it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, well, I could do that too, you know. You want to talk about insecure? Like, I hope that was an edited scene and production made her do that because that made Danielle look so bad. So, so bad. Like, and I felt bad for, like, if that was authentic, I feel really, really bad for, I, I've always felt bad for Danielle. But like, you know, her having to do that, like, oh, look, I have a bikini on too. I have a body too. Don't forget about me, Garrick. You know, that was just, and the dad was looking at Danielle and Garrick was looking at the dad and Bert was just like looking at her uterus. I don't know. Um, oh, well, you know, she was in the sexy bathing suit and they zoomed in and they just went up and down her body, the camera. So Danielle caught eye of it and she said, well, I can do that. And right as Bert sat down, she stood up and took hers off a little clumsily, I would say, too. Not as sexy as Bert did it. Insane. It, like, yeah. And like, you know, this is never going to work. I don't even know how. I don't know if, if Bert's preg. I don't know. No it's idea. not going to work with them living together in the same house with Danielle's insecurities. No. But I, I don't even know how Danielle's lasted this long. I mean, could you imagine them all being in the house? Uh, together and, and Bert comes out. Bert takes, you know, uh, it just like, you know, and Danielle's in competition with her. Well, that's the whole thing. It's going to be competition all day long, 24 7. And uh, you can't live like that either. And, you know, Garrick has eyes for Bert. So this is not going to be a very good situation for Danielle or for the boys. And you notice how every time they ask, uh, boys or children in this situation in polygamy, you know, are you excited about having a second mom or a third mom? And they all say yes. You know, we get more attention. Wait to read this comment was everything. Garrick is Joel Osteen meets Jordan Show. Yes, he does look like Joel Osteen. He does. Doesn't Garrick look like him? Yes, he does. Yeah. You're right. Yes, that that and that is that, that you hit it right on the. I I knew he reminded me of someone. I just couldn't put my finger on it. it does look like oh, Joel Osteen. Osteen. That is so funny. <laughs> it's really that's spot on. 
Um, and he's got like, you know, the dad's like, um, uh, so what do you think? And Garrick just sits there with, with like that empty dead expression on his face. He's like, well, it's like a deer in headlights. He's like, like he's well, like, I guess, you know, I'm going to have to cross that bridge when we come to it. And, you know, it, it's just going to be hard, but, you know, we're going to do, I, I hate him. Um, I just hate him so much. We'll just leave it in God's hands. And the father says, well, you know, there are a lot of Bible stories about that. And sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands. Are you prepared? I can't believe her parents co-signed for any of this. And like, you know, we all know what's going to happen. He's going to run off. He's so in love with Bert. Like, that's why Danielle has to take her, her top off. So like, she's like, hi, I'm still here. Hi, hi, I'm here. Um, she's so in love with it. You know, Bert's so, they're so in love with each other. Now, uh, you know, they already got divorced, Garrick and Danielle. It seemed like they got divorced in a hurry. So I don't know if they drew up any paperwork, you know, because they're divorced. I mean, it doesn't seem like it because the father's very concerned. And he mentions it a few times that he's concerned for Danielle. No, he did say man up. No, the dad was like trying, you know, the dad was like being like a, a good dad, but like, I'm sorry. Like, I would never have co signed to this at all. I wouldn't have gone down there. I wouldn't have hugged her. I would have been like, uh, no. You know, this is my daughter. My daughter is Danielle, and she's the wife, and these are my grandkids, and I'm going to let this guy screw this other woman uh, who was, like, you know, sent from God or whatever in the other room. And, I, like, I, and the dad did try, but, like, I don't know. I think they went down there for their daughter, you know, for support. I don't think she would have been able to handle this trip on her own mentally, you know? All right. I, I, I'm dying to I'm know. I'm kind of glad her parents are with her, especially her father, you know, because he's going toe to toe with uh, Garrick. Yeah, no, to the father's credit, he did, but like, it's still like Garrick's like, oh, uh, you know, it, it looked like he popped five Xanax and smoked something. He's like, yeah, well, you know, we'll take it as it comes. Like, you know, it's like a learning experience. He's like, where's Bird? I want to fuck her. You know, like, it's like, that's like, that's it. Like, it, 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 it you know, Whenever someone talks to him, all he's thinking about is Bert. Right. Uh, and I really, you know, and we, we, we talked about this last week, even on their anniversary when Danielle and Garrick went out for their anniversary dinner, 13 years or whatever, being married. You know, he spoke about Bert the whole time. Like, if you want to convince your wife that you still love her even like a little bit, don't mention her on your anniversary dinner. Not Like, just... He's the worst. I hate him. I mean, they really should have had some kind of schedule. I, I'm thinking about the children, and is there no shame? I mean, why don't you have some kind of schedule so she could be out with the kids and her parents, sightseeing or doing whatever, and leave you alone with Bert to do your thing? I mean, you can't be doing it all day and all night. You have a family to think of. Be a little considerate. Um... You know, and the kids are there, and the parents are there, and like it's like you know, and I have a feeling that Garrick's like like just loud, like you know, he, he probably sucks in bed, and he's just like, oh yeah, like just like you know, okay. get on top. What is yeah, I want to put a baby with you? Like I like I just ah. Um, <laughs> you thought about that part. Because she's, like she's so nice. What does she see in him? What is wrong with her? There's got to be something. We're missing something. What does she? Oh, see the baby like? maker cocktail. Yes, that that drama. Like this is the baby maker. Like, come on. It's just tequila. Like, it's just icky. It's icky. It's icky. I hate it. Like the whole the family's there. Like it's Christmas morning. Like you know, let's open up some gifts while Daddy's you know trying to impregnate some. Yeah, and that and that toast was so improper. And I do, I, do, I do like Bert. I like Bert a lot. I think she. I like her. Got nothing to say. I really have nothing bad to say about Bert. I really don't. Um, Just her taste in men. Melly, like Big Ed had four. Uh, had was it C H R? Oh, 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 okay. Allegedly. Right. So it is what it is. Um, so as far as I know. Um, they are still together. 
and I'm going to continue to dig until, and then like, you know, um, I posted an article today that like Danielle was cryptically like defending the Snowden. So she just not right in the head. Like I, like she was like, you know, de defending them. Um, and just something happened to, to Dan, poor Danielle, where she just lost her damn mind and she forgot who she was as a person. So she could let her husband divorce her and her husband impregnate this woman and probably take her kids away from her. Wait, I, I just, I, you know what? I just see it ending very badly for Danielle. Yeah. She's probably going to be in the same tent city with Dimitri asking people if she can move into their houses because she ain't got nowhere to go because she got screwed over by her husband. She's going up on me and daddy. And, oh, at least, yeah, no, her, her parents at least will take Danielle in. She won't, she won't end up in the tent city. Uh, as far as Dimitri, I don't know. <laughs> And the saga continues. And the show's over, you know. Um, that's it. It was 12 episodes. There's no tell-all. It was a very lousy ending. They're all MIA. What show can they do? <laughs> you know, the what last episode just showed the Snowdens. <laughs> undercover. Doing and undercover the undercover tell-all. Um, and uh, that's it. Season over, you know. Let's see when they bring it back. We had to wait two years for this last season to start. And let's see who they bring back. Um, you know, as much as I hate Garrick, I want to see them play it on TV again. I wouldn't lie. Um, as far as the Snowdens, they can bounce. I want the I want the Winders back. Mm -hmm. I like them. The, uh, the Kingdom, they can go. He needs to move to the Middle East for his harem. <laughs> And who else is on? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, Flower Power and Patchouli. I want them back because I think they're honest, and uh, I think it's all the couples. Yeah. So that's it. Um, hopefully, I will be going. We were doing part eight with um, uh, Jen, who gave me the information that we just posted tonight about Dimitri being homeless. I will post the email on my Instagram and my Twitter. That way you guys can see it. Um, and then hopefully we can go live soon and, and do part eight. And I think that's it, right? We're good. You got anything else to read? No, that's it. I'm just looking forward to uh, seeing what happens with Danielle and Garrick. And uh, absolutely with um, Chrissy and the Snowdens. Um, and see when the show comes back on. All right. I'd like to see an end. You know, don't okay. leave us hanging, TLC. All right. So, guys, to my moderators, thank you so much for you have the hardest job in show business. Uh, to my co-host, Sarit, thank you for being on here. Thank you. Thank you beautiful. It was fun. Uh, guys, thank you for the super chats. I really appreciate them. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, just hit subscribe and like the video and um i got i'm working on a whole bunch of things so i will see you guys we're actually going we're happy, we, okay so we have something really fun planned this weekend so you guys are gonna see it it's gonna be really good um and um yeah so everybody have a great night god bless good night everyone thank you john it was good fun. night